Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake on the mic coming at you here with some USBO action here on MLB The Show 21 using that PS5, of course. We have a good set of games for you guys here once again as we are wrapping up the rest of the gameplay, the best games that we are able to come up with here in early July before we go ahead and get into the All-Star break event. Also, on top of that, not only are we going to see some gameplay, we're also going to see all of the call-ups. Yo, know, these are players that are going from the minor league levels up to the USBO level. So, all those changed actions that happened over the course of early July because we did have some trades that went down the last episode. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it yet. As we get started off here in this episode, we got ourselves a solo shot by Framel Reyes. It's considered the 17th home run of the season for him as the San Diego Wales. They take an early 1-0 lead here as Jameson Dallion does get his third strikeout. And does settle down a little bit here to strike out the rest of the stride once that solo shot happened. But yeah, man, like I said, we got plenty of things happen here in this episode. So if you want to do me a favor, smash that like button, hit subscribe, even share it out to you. Some of your friends and family, man, that would help grow the channel, grow the community here around the John Jake Baseball channel. But with that being said, we cut to the bottom of the second inning where Justin Arden puts a charge into this baseball. He sends it deep out to left center field, and it is a free run shot for Justin Upton. It is the only the 11th home run of the season for Justin Upton. As Philadelphia does end up tacking on free runs against Clayton Kershaw. I don't know. It's just because of all of the realignment that has happened in this league. Clayton Kershaw, usually one of the more dominant pitchers in the, you know, in all professional baseball. He struggled a little bit this season. And we're kind of seeing that manifest here today as Clayton Kershaw. We're not even free innings in yet. He has already allowed five earned runs. So, it's not been a good look for Clayton Kershaw thus far, although he will settle down here a little bit once again. He will strike out Jesus Aguera, but Bryce Harper will go ahead. He gets another home run out there on the board off of only four hits, too. So, San Diego finds himself in an early hole here is Anthony Johnson, who, if you guys remember from the main channel, we actually had a baseball series with the Texas Rangers. He was one of those custom players. That was in that series before we moved on over, you know, all the baseball content over on the baseball channel. Anthony Johnson comes up in here, gets a, a double, his 12th double of the season. He came in as a top 50 prospect. Still pretty good so far as Anthony Johnson is going to find his way home. And San Diego does find themselves on the board here. Oh, well, we got somebody trying to get the third. And that's just, that just ain't it, my guy. He, you know... Throw was offline, you know, so we're trying to take advantage of it, but wasn't as far off as anticipated. Nice awareness there to get that out, you know, an unforced out, matter of fact. As Jameson Talion gets another strikeout. It's the seventh strikeout for him in this ball game, but he's going to also give up another run here as well as we got a solo shot here, courtesy of none other. Then Jake Crowensworth, the 13th home run of the season. As Ramil Reyes comes up to the plate here as well. He actually has himself a chance to go ahead and tie this ball game up. We'll see if he can do it. And it's a nice base hit. This might bring in one run. Looks like it was almost caught in the air. Does get runners in the corners. But San Diego does end up fumbling the bad. They do not bring any of those runners home. So... Philadelphia Patriots, they still find themselves down, up actually. They are up 5-3. to three. It's Clayton Kershaw. He's still on the mound here in the bottom of the fifth inning. But he's going to give up yet another solo shot. Is this going to be yet Clayton Kershaw? Is he going to be pulled early in this game? No, it looks like he will stay in for the time being. But this will likely be his final batter. And at least finishes strong. Strikes out Bryce Harper to end the bottom of the fifth inning. But... I would imagine that starting the sixth inning, we see another new pitcher out there for the San Diego Wales. But that being said, Jameson Talion, he's feeling pretty good about himself as far overall. Rather efficient. He's going to at least try to start off this sixth inning. But 
starting off with an extra base hit. We we do wonder how long that Jamison Talion will remain in this ball game. Is this a 6-3 lead for the Philadelphia Patriots? We got a strikeout called. Doing some window shopping because he's just looking. That's the eighth strikeout for Jamison Talion. As Anthony Johnson comes up to the plate now, he's actually going to get a single out into right field. Trying to get it in quickly. Runners will be at the corner, but Anthony Johnson does bring a run in. And so, 6 free ball game. They're going to turn to John Bareba. A free run game here, but the tying run at the plate here is he's going to go ahead get himself at least a base hit. Good trying to string it out for two. Will not be a play made on the ball. And the San Diego Whales pull within two runs. The tying run now just 180 feet away. We'll see if Mackenzie Francisco can bring him home. Is this a nice well hit ball out in the right field? It's hit deep. And while it won't be considered a home run, it does at least bring a sacrifice fly. So Mackenzie Francisco does make it a one run game as Jake Cronesworth tries to tie this thing up once and for all for the San Diego Whales. And we might get to a stack here. Jake Cronesworth. Trying to get home, and it's going to be a tie ball game now. All tied up at six apiece. You're usually accustomed to more of the high-scoring games in the USBL, and it is no different here. So San Diego ties this game up as Matt Weisler comes to the mound for the San Diego Whales, and he actually is making only his second appearance as he was one of the people that was recently called up. I will go into a little bigger detail into who got sent down because of uh, that roster move shortly. But Matt Wise were not off to a good start. Gave up a solo shot, which does give Philadelphia back the lead. So if Philadelphia hangs on to win this, Matt Weiser will be charged with the loss. But does calm himself down a little bit. Ends up striking out both George Springer as well as Vare Vlad Gramero Jr., as it brings to the end of the sixth inning now, another pitcher coming in for the Philadelphia Patriots. And Alejandro Sapia, he's making his 19th appearance of the season. And is taking on for Mir Reyes here with two outs, trying to close this thing out. And it's hit deep. This got some distance, but it's just going to die in the warning track. And this game is going to be over. We had a little exciting matchup there for sure. We had a... Good old-fashioned offensive matchup here. Philadelphia hanging on and winning 7-6. So welcome back here to some more USBL action as we shift out east where the Atlanta Barons are taking on the Cleveland Rockers. Cleveland was one of the teams that tried to be a buyer at the USBL trade deadline, but Lady Luck was simply not on their side, so the roster is going to stay put for now. Atlanta, on the other hand, they're currently fourth in the AL East. They got a lot of catching up to do. They weren't necessarily sellers at the trade deadline, but not a lot of long-term confidence in the current makeup of this roster. But for the time being, Atlanta will go ahead and take an early 1-0 lead here. As Yoan Moncada comes to the plate here with two outs in the top of the third inning. And he's going to get a nice poke out in the center field. And it's going to get all the way to the wall. This could be a triple. Trying to stretch it that far as Yoan Moncada going to get himself an RBI triple. And that's going to be the third triple for him this season. As the manager will come to the mound in order to talk to Miles Moustakis or to go ahead. Trying to calm him down just a little bit. We'll see if it has a positive or negative effect on him as Bo Bichette comes to the plate. This one's hit pretty deep as well and maybe the manager talk. Did not go very well whatsoever as Bo Bichette almost gets that one out of here as well. And it is going to stretch it all the way out to a triple as well. The second triple of the season for Bo Bichette. And Atlanta manages to get three runs here in the top of the third inning before the ending ultimately ending with a strikeout look. And was, the man was doing some window shopping. So... Atlanta is off to a good start. We'll see if the Cleveland Rockers can respond. And that's one way to do it. How about that to get yourself on the board for the very first time today? A two-run home run for Akitas Aquino. 
Only his third home run of the season. And it pulls him within just one. And we might see another home run here. And we do. Two home runs in a row. Call it a Drake song because he's going back to back. As Ron Mildcastle goes deep there and ties the game up, forcing Atlanta to go to the bullpen. Joey Rodriguez facing Ken Grubb, who's, a, who's been a player that has done really well when we've seen him in gameplay. Not so much in the sim, but does end up striking out there to end the fifth inning. As we're going to the top of the sixth now, William Tan coming up to the plate here, all tied up at three apiece. He's having himself a good season as well, batting 293 thus far on the young USBL season as he's going to rise that up closer to 300 as that's going to be at least a double. Trying to stretch it out to a triple. It's going to be close, but manages just barely to sneak in there. The second double of the season for William Tan, and this is what the Atlanta Barons do. You know, looking at the American League stats for triples, Atlanta is currently third place right now, only trailing Minnesota and Las Vegas. And so runner on third base puts some more stress on the pitcher, and that's what happens when you get the pitcher a little down bad. Can't hit the pitch in the exact spot that you'll want it. Garrett Hampson with the 10th home run of the season. And Cleveland will be going to the bullpen once again. Chris Davinsky. Coming up here, taking on Pedro Severino here in this time of the sixth inning. Still, as it's another solo shot, trying to get a little bit more insurance as Cleveland does have a really good offense on its hands. A forward on the season for Pedro Severino. And Cleveland going back to the bullpen once more. This time, Chris Roussan only making his second appearance of the season. Atlanta is looking for some more insurance to tack on. You can never have a big enough lead here in the USBL. It's not as hard as it is in some other league that's ran by a certain commissioner that likes to change things up in the middle of the season. We obviously don't do that here. We, you know, we got, you know, better things to do. You know, we love the game of baseball, actually. But, but Atlanta does end up tacking on another insurance run. They get to be up by four runs, and that is more than enough for Hanzo Robles to take care of the rest a clean inning to close this game out and Atlanta gets a much needed win here in divisional play defeating the Cleveland Rockers in a convincing fashion win this one by a final score of 7 to 3 but speaking of the USBL on trade day let's go ahead and check a look at two teams that are going in the opposite direction we have the Chicago Breeze going on the road to take on a divisional put matchup in the Detroit Leopards. And the Detroit Leopards actually let go of their starting catcher, Roberto Perez. They gave him off to the New Orleans Kings. So there's somebody new out there on the backstop for uh, Vince Val Valquez he's going to have to get used to. Meanwhile, the Chicago Freeze did end up getting Jose Abreu, so we'll see how that plays out here in this game as we have Michael Brantley going deep, getting it all the way out to the wall, able to get a double out there in left field. So Michael Brantley does end up getting the first hit of this game as he got two outs here in the top of the first inning. Joey Gallo, who looks like Vince Valquez was a little slow in responding and actually beats it out. Beats out a play to the pitcher. And they're going to actually score a single instead of an error. I would lean that a little bit closer to an error personally because it seems like Vince Valquez just didn't react fast enough at all. But it is what it is as, you know, Alex would, you know, give some run, run support to start things out. He had a clean bottom of the first as the offense trying to do some more work for it, build a bigger difference, and it's gone. Solo shot for Alex Verdeu, the 13th home run of the season for that young man. As we get into the bottom half of the lineup now, Kyle Seeger coming to the plate. He's actually going to be done, fooled, bamboozled. Gets the second strike out there for Vince Valquez. As Kyle Hirazaka, he's going to come up to the plate as well. Couple batters later, two outs, and gets a nice little two out single. No, wait! It's going to be a double. He's trying to stretch this thing and gets in on time. So a two-out double for Kyle Hirozaka. And it brings back Andrelton Simmons once more. And that's deep. 
This is what happens when you don't close out innings here in the USBL. You have give up some runs more often than the fifth home run in the season for Andre and Simmons. As we go into the top of the third inning, Xander Bogarts comes up to the plate. He's been having a great year thus far. Batting 310 so far. As Xander Bogarts, he takes his out into deep right center field. It's actually going to drop. Make it to the wall. This could potentially be a triple. He's trying to stretch it as such. And there will not be a play at third base. Just going to go ahead, get it home, make sure that the inside of the park home run is not allowed. But the Chicago Freeze, they are off to a hot start. They are certainly cold as ice when dealing with their opponents. As Joey Gallo, he will fly out into center field. Will end up bringing Sander Bogarts in. So thanks to the sacrifice by, fly by Joey Gallo, that will make it a 5-0 lead. As Jose Abreu now comes to the play. He was the acquisition for Chicago Freeze. Was acquired from the Columbus Jets in the USBL trade day. And making an immediate impact right away as Jose Abreu. He's going to stretch it out to a double. Not known as a speedster, but will get on base and get to second. And that gets the runner into scoring position as Nick Birdie going to come into the game. Try to calm things down here a little bit. But, I mean, it's a daunting task. Up, down five to nothing. And Detroit, you know, it's a team. It's not very good. They're kind of in a situation where they're allowing their, I guess, uh, you know, younger players to show out. You know, see what they have in the organization. Kind of testing the farm system a little bit here. So... Maybe it's rebuilding time here in Detroit. There also has been some rumors of maybe them being relocated, depending on how the rest of the season goes. But, you know, we still have a few months of baseball left to play. You know, it's still uh, something that has to be sorted out here just yet. As we ended up seeing uh, runners on both first and second base. As Wario Suarez finally helps in getting a run on the board for Detroit. They were thinking about shopping him around, but will end up staying in Detroit and helps them get the first run on the board for them. So, feels good that it at least won't be a shutout here, but still plenty of ground needed to try to catch up here. As Chicago just keeps going, they are just providing hit after hit, run after run. And again, Jose Abreu. Two for free in this game. He's been making a big impact for his brand new ball club. It helps when you're playing for a contender. It helps with the morale a little bit. Instead of wearing Columbus, you know, it's a little different in Columbus. Let's just say that as nicely as possible as that will also go ahead and end the top of the fifth inning. Jose Abreu does end up getting that, you know, 7-1 lead. So plenty of room for the bullpen to go ahead, you know, make something shake here, you know, able to relax a little bit here as Rec Brother does come into the game. We'll face off against Wario Suarez, who's 0 for 2, but does have an RBI so far. But wait a minute now, there's still some fight left in the Detroit Leopard squad. That is deep in the right center field, and it is going to be gone, the 27th home run of the season. This man is on pace for 50 home runs would that be something you know if he able to get 50 dingers you know we are a big uh dingers kind of uh league here at the usbl speaking of dingers there's another home run by the detroit leopards this time kyle swarber going deep and sending that out 461 feet as a call in a more seasoned bullpen arm ian kennedy making his 41st appearance of the season and helps clean things up to make sure Detroit does not get any more runs on the board. But Detroit starts to close in. It's now just a free run difference. Could potentially get a little bit interesting. Depending on what J.B. Wilker can, can do in this inning. If Detroit's going to come back, you need to make this either, you know, got to score at least one run in this inning. And they might excel that. As that's a deep fly ball out into right field. And it's going to be gone. Tommy Wastella with the 12th home run of the season. And just now, a one-run game. The young guys for Detroit. They got something to say here, man. This is getting very exciting. But if they're going to come all the way back, they're going to have to come up against Orodis Chapman. 
one of the best closers that the USBL has as Kyle Swarver finds that out the hard way. Strikes out, just doing some window shopping. Rodis Chapman, by the way, having himself a wonderful season. I would not doubt him as an all-star in this USBL all-star game that's going to happen next episode as Rodis is currently second in the AL. But they are, you know, the thing about Rodis Chapman, it's always hit or miss. You know, either he's a guy that is impossible to hit or... You know, the control isn't all the way there. We're seeing that here as we got bases loaded. Two outs. And this could be the game winner. It drops. Tying run scores. Will the game winning run score? Yes. Detroit down 7 to 1. Is going to storm all the way back. And Detroit Leopards, the young guys, pull the upset on the division leading Chicago Freeze. Winning in the bottom of the ninth. Speaking of excitement, you know, if the Detroit Leopards can win after, you know, being sellers at the USBL trade deadline, who says the Columbus Jets cannot do the same thing as they take on yet another tough opponent, a potential championship contender in the Houston Astronauts. But the thing about this Columbus Jets, it's been weird ever since they made the tr those trades. Trade away Jose Abreu. They have been on you know, quite a streak and could very much so sweep the Houston Astronauts and that could play you know a pivotal role in playoff seeding as the Houston Astronauts still are in first place in the ALS as Miguel Rejos does hit a solo shot because now JD Davis he comes to the plate now you know going up against the starter for the Columbus Jets and Chase Anderson J.D. Davis will be the first strikeout in this ball game. I've got Keston Hira coming up. He's batting 314, but gets done fooled. He gets bamboozled at the plate here as well. So Miguel Rejos, you know, gets that solo shot. It gives him an early 1-0 lead, and good to see it too, especially when Michael Piana is on the mound. You know, he's a solid pitcher thus far, a 3.35 ERA, doing some good work. And all, but the opposite of doing good work, Josh Bell, he's been on a cold streak, though. Still batting 262 despite that. But Josh Bell looking to get back into the groove here. That's one way to break the slump. Just hit one out of the yard. Just hit it real far. 425 feet far. Home run for Josh Bell. And that does go ahead and make it a 2 to nothing game. As we're still here in the bottom of the second inning. We're actually got a steal here. And it looks like Ronald Acuna Jr. does end up becoming safe. And look at the max speed, 20 plus miles per hour. And got in there well before the tag. So Ronald Acuna does move into scoring position even as Austin Riley will end up being grounded out. That will be considered an RBI. And the Columbus Jets doing a good job of manufacturing runs. And that's one reason why Columbus has struggled quite a bit. Ronald Acuna Jr., that's one of the best players that they have on this team, and he has simply not performed so far. Matter of fact, he has not lived up to expectations. As Christian Yelich, you know, he knows a thing or two about expectations. How about another moonshot for him? 17th home run of the season. It makes it a 3-1 lead here for the Houston Astronauts as Josh Bell tries to keep the good vibes going. And this is another deep fly ball out in the center field. This could be just a little bit of trouble, and it's gone as well. A home run for Josh Bell, the 18th one this season. So Josh Bell came into this game, you know, in a little bit of a slump, but now it's a 4-1 lead here. As now Alex Kuroff coming to the plate as well. He's going to go ahead and get himself a hit as well. It's a hitting party for this Houston Astronaut squad here on the road. And that's another extra base hit. Alex Kuroff getting a 12 double of the season. Now Columbus will be going to the bullpen. And they turn to Clayton Andrews, who was called up recently. He's making his USBL debut. And look, at just a small fellow right there, if I say so myself. Got a little bit unlucky there as well. Defense could not make a play for him. That will turn in another one. And Chase Andrews will not get the hold. In his USBL debut, he will end up getting out of this inning, though. But it's crazy how small 5'6 looks on the mound, though. Like, he's not 
stereotypical height for your average pitcher, but, you know, he didn't do too bad in his USBL debut. If he gets some more USBL action, unless Columbus decides to pull him in, in favor of bringing in another uh, veteran on this team as uh, Vaughn does end up striking out. But Columbus does end up getting that run back at the very least. Keep in shouting distance. You know, it's still only a free run difference. And there's plenty of baseball still left to play here as we'll go ahead and go to the bottom of the fifth as we get yet another strikeout. This time, you know, Michael Piana, you know, just going hard on the inside. Cesar Hernandez now comes up to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He's going to take this one out to left field. This could get past, and it does. Fielder actually falls on his feet. Did a nice little tumble. It was very graceful, but Cesar Hernandez gets the triple, and Columbus pulls now within two runs. So things could get really interesting. Are the sellers at the USBL trade deadline, are they going to go 2-0 today? Is that what we're really going to see right now? I don't know, man. Buddy in baseball left to play as we now get in. To the bottom of the six. Robert Gesman comes to the game now. His 31st appearance is Jock Peterson. He ends up striking out swing of a second batter for Robert Gesman. As Austin Riley comes to the plate now, he does have a sacrifice RBI in this game so far, but in there for a different reason as Ronald Acuna Jr. does end up getting his second stolen base of the day doing everything he can to help this team win this baseball game. As a matter of fact, Ronald Acuna does end up scoring thanks to the fact that he stole that base. And now, this game is suddenly all tied up. A brand new ball game here waiting for us here as Raul Batista tries to help Columbus take the lead, but is going to just do that window shopping. It is a strikeout for him. So it is still a tied ball game here in the bottom of the sixth. And we'll go ahead and cut into the top of the eighth inning. Cal Cantrell making his 51st appearance of the season. But Houston's going to make a substitution as well. DeLaro DeShields Jr. comes in as a pinch runner here in the latter stages of this ball game. As DeShields Jr. not waiting too long to make his impact felt as he steals second base. They don't even go ahead and get the tag down. So now that leads to bases loaded. Christian Yelich at the plate here where two outs. This is a big at bat. And Christian Yelich, how about this for some clutch hitting right there? That's a no doubter when you get that kind of angle. And Christian Yelich gets his 18th home run. And Columbus, who did all of that time to get themselves back into this ball game. Now they're basically starting from scratch here, and now there is not a lot of time left to go ahead and fuel around here. Got to get some runs, and you got to get them quickly, as Alonzo DeShields Jr. will remain in this game. He will be playing out there in right field. As we see, Ronald Acuna Jr. hasn't gotten any hits today, but has gotten a couple of walks. We see him hit out there in the center field. This is deep. This might be out of the field of play, and it is. Just that, another home run for Ronald Cunha Jr. That's how Cunha Jr. is at the plate. You know, if he would have hit more for contact, you know, if he would definitely be an all-star caliber player. He has the elite speed and has good power numbers too, 22 home runs. That's, that's pretty good if I say so myself, but still down by three runs. Columbus does not end up getting any more runs on the board so i mean best case scenario i mean you got him get free runs somehow in this ninth inning just to keep the game alive as josmiro petite who if you saw from the last game against chicago detroit this is the man that is leading in saves in the entire american league no different story here he's gonna end up getting saved number 30 as the houston astronauts you know they end up winning this one by a final score of 9-6 in order to go ahead and extend their lead in the AOS. But, like what I saw from the Columbus Jets, they gave a really good fight in this ball game. And so, for our final game here today, we do have the Minnesota Ducks going on the road to play against the Nashville Blues. 
in some AL Central Division play. And the Minnesota Ducks, they've been doing pretty good. Not necessarily with hitting the ball, only batting 243, but they have only allowed two runs in this entire series so far. We'll see if Minnesota can take care of business and sweep the Nashville Blues. Nashville will be bringing out Pablo Lopez out into the game as Pablo does end up getting up a steal. It looks like none over than Tim LaCastro with the 21st steal of the season. And that's the dangerous thing about the Minnesota Ducks. They are probably, hands down, the fastest team in the USBL in terms of athleticism, in terms of, you know, just pure raw speed. Their leadoff hitter from Tim Crasso to Gary Waters to, you know, even uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., who's actually at the plate right now, but will end up striking out, though. You know, this is a fast group of guys. As we cut, cut into the top of the second inning here, Randall Polinsi coming into this ball game, and he's going to try to do some damage as well and might get this out of the park here. It's got some decent carry. It will end up in the field of play, but at the same time, though, it is going to end up being a double for him. So Minnesota does end up going ahead and getting some more runners into score position as Fad Gonzalez comes to the plate here. He's more of a home guy, but on the road, not necessarily a road warrior. Only batting 220, but making a notable exception here, though, as we end up with another run for the Minnesota Ducks. And that is a RBI double for Fad Gonzalez, the 13th one of the season. As Gary Waters comes to the plate here. He's going to end up getting himself a base hit as well. This might bring in at least two. There's some speedsters out on the base path. Now got runners on second and third. Pablo Lopez in some serious trouble now as he faces Fernando Tatis Jr. And not striking out this time around. That's going to bring in two runners. Seeing the speed really on full display, especially when they're getting people on base. Watch out for this Minnesota Duck squad. They they are going to really, you know, give some people some trouble when we get into playoff action. Question is, can they end up catching the Chicago Freeze? Because they are in the same division. If not, they will have to go to a one-game playoff. That is the AL Wild Card. You know, hopefully they get a home game for that. But, you know, that being said here, Nashville is going to make a change to the bullpen. Caleb Ferguson coming in, making his 34th appearance of the season. And taking care of business, man, making sure no more damage is done. But Minnesota doing some damage. They're up 5 to nothing, in the Nashville Blues. They're feeling a little down bad right now. Eddie Rosario coming up to the plate facing Luis Castillo. He's having a pretty good season as well. Although he will end up giving up at least a base hit. This will probably turn into a double. And that is the case right there. Trying to round out. See what's going on. You know, see if he can get to third. But wise decision to not go for third base. As Eddie Rosario does end up in scoring position. And then two batters later, Daryl Cooley almost ends up getting that play but this ends up being a foul ball now here we go here full count let's see what he can do looks like it's a deep fly ball is going to it's going to be considered an out but nashville will also go ahead and get a run on the board you absolutely love to see it is now michael chavez he comes to the plate as well is going to end up striking out on top of that and that ends the second inning. But, you know, guys, after that, nothing really much happens. We get all the way out to the ninth inning. And the ninth inning is where things get interesting. We'll see here if Minnesota can go ahead and get some more. Um, get some more insurance just in case. And no problem from Fernando Tatis Jr. It ends up being a two-run home run for him. His 19th home run of the season is now Roberto Nunez. Trying to add on some more, but it will end up being a strikeout for him. But Minnesota does succeed in getting a couple of insurance runs to go into the bottom of the ninth. They keep Garrett Crotchet, who did pitch a few innings going into this you know, specific ninth inning as well. But it's no problem for him. He ends up closing it out. Nashville 
Just could not hit the baseball whatsoever. It's a darn shame, but Minnesota does end up winning by a score of 7-1 to one in this ball game. So after we you know, went ahead and did make some changes, you know, made some trades for the very first time, I think it's time for us to go ahead and check out you know, some players that are going to go ahead and get a call up, starting with the Denver Bald Eagles. You know, who got some new talent coming in. Yo, know, Kevin Grinkle, uh, he is going to go ahead. He's going to get his first shot. Um, first shot, at least this season. Uh, he will be called up to the big league squad, you know, moving up from AAA. Meanwhile, for the San Jose Marauders, we're going to see a call up in the starting pitching rotation as well as Trevor Witchers. You know, he gets up to a 75 overall, so he will also get a call up to the usbl club he's gonna join the major league team and he is going to go ahead and replace peter kato who's currently at the usbl level but you know 3.67 era you know he's only had you know half as many quality starts as as he does you know actual games so you know maybe might be served uh going down to triple a level for for a little bit you know get a little bit development in Meanwhile, for the Detroit Leopards, we check out the relief pitching rotation for uh, Detroit and Carlos Estevan. You know, he seems like he is now ready to go up to the USBL club. So he will go ahead. He's going to get that call to join the big league team. And who is he going to replace? He is going to go ahead and replace Nick. Actually, no, Brad Barch. You know, 34 years old, um, not doing so hot either. 8.88 ERA. Um, yeah, he's he's just gonna go. Uh, he's go we're gonna go ahead. He's gonna move down to the AAA level. Staying with the Detroit Lampers, we see another call up in their organization as Peyton Ingles been doing pretty well, batting 268. No home runs, but does have four RBIs. So. He will get an opportunity to go ahead and prove himself. He will get a call to the big league squad with Jose Bricario. He hasn't been doing so hot. He's actually starting to regress a little bit. He's going to move down in triple A. The Columbus Jets, in addition, were a team that also uh, went ahead and made some changes on the train day. You know, being a seller, getting rid of Jose Abreu. But they are also going to call at least one person up. One person they're going to call up is Clayton Andrews. He's been doing solid in AAA. 3.22 ERA, 0.149 whip. I think it's time for him to go ahead and give him his shot at the next level. But who's he going to replace? He's going to replace Tyler Kolak, who 25 years old, 59 overall. Um, just not cutting it. 8.29 ERA. That's simply not good enough. He's going to head back down to the minor leagues. Moving on over to the New York Knights, who were buyers at the train day here today. We will go ahead and see a little bit of an exchange. Uh, Armando Aviado has been on fire at the AAA level, and we'll go ahead and get a shot. Yo, he will move up to the big league club, and we'll go ahead and replace Joey Murray, who has struggled quite a bit, a, a ERA of around five. He could use some time in AAA, you know, could use a little bit of help in the develop development part. In addition, Blank Walston is only 18 years old, but he's going to get a shot. He's shown some, you know, ability, you know, at the AAA level. He's shown some flash, and you know, they're going to see what he can do as well. Blake Walston's going to get a shot at the big league level as well, replacing Josh Tomlin, you know, who has really started to decline rapidly. You know, not going to be really much of, of assistance. So Josh Tomlin is going to be a mentor down at the AAA level as well. Keeping up what has been a busy transaction period for the New York Knights. They're also going to go ahead and call up Rodnell Guzman. He now has a higher overall than Evan White. 268, 4 home runs, 17 RBIs. He's going to get a look up at the big league club while Evan White has just not worked out thus far. He has a good defense, but he really needs to work on his hitting skills a little bit. He can work on that down at the AAA level. And what about the Boston Quakers, who were the biggest sellers 
you know, end the entirety of the trade deadline. Well, it looks like Boston is going to go ahead. They're going to go call up Austin Davis. You know, 3.44 ERA, just 26 years old. You know, might as well go ahead and see what they got in him because it is, you know, trying to see what they have in their guys, you know, and the only way to do that is get them up to that USBL level, see what they can do. Matt Grace will be called down to triple A, you know, as a casualty of that. In addition, the Boston Quakers are also going to go ahead and take the time to, you know, make a little bit of exchange because Jared Kalnerick has not done well at the USBL level thus far, you know, batting less than, not even on the interstate right now. So he's going to go ahead and move down to AAA. And they're going to see what Gilberto Jimenez has, you know, batting 196, yes, at AAA, but he does provide more speed abilities. You know, and a better uh, defensive arm than what Jared Kolnick has. So we'll see what Gilbert Hamanez, you know, is able to do moving forward at the USBL level. And now we get into the teams that have not necessarily been involved in the USBL training day. We start with the Baltimore Stone Crabs. We check out those left fielder position. And Jonathan Walden, you know, he's improved himself up to a 69 overall. But that's not the biggest story here. Ryan Braun has really fallen off the cliff. He is starting to decline at a rapid pace. And I think it's time to see what Jonathan Walden can do. He is a 69 overall C potential. Batting 291, I think he's ready to go. So he'll move on to the USBL club, moving down Ryan Braun. Meanwhile, for the Atlanta Barons, we go ahead and check out their starting rotation. And Sandy Alcantara... Just hasn't really worked out for them. 7-7, seven and seven, yes, but a 6.6 .6 ERA. Carlos Martinez seems like he's a little bit more ready as of right now. Um, So, Carlos Martinez, he's going to go ahead and move himself up to the big league club. Whereas, Sandy Alcantara, he's going to go ahead. He's going to move down to AAA. You know, just so they can build his confidence up just a little bit. You know, and then eventually he will be ready for the USBL once again. Keeping with the pitching department for the Atlanta Barons, Jalen Beeks will also get to call up to the USBL club. While Taylor Williams, you know, hasn't been awful, but it seems like Jalen Beeks might be a better option to his point. He's going to move out down the AAA. In other transactions, Atlanta will also be calling up Bryce Turing, a 22-year-old shortstop. He will be asked to back up Bo Bichette right away, and I think it's a good move. I think he's certainly ready. Uh, Riley Unruh, in limited playing time, just has not shown that he's ready to go just yet. So Riley Unruh will move down to short to the AAA level for the time being. Moving over to the Cleveland Rockers, and they will make a change in their bullpen. They're going to go ahead and call up Kristen Roussan up to the big league club. Whereas Brandon Kitts will actually move down to AAA. He has been on a steady decline and that will only get worse you know, as time goes on. So he will go ahead and move on down to the AAA club. Staying in the Cleveland Rockers organization, we do see a move happen at center field. Cameron Maybin, you know, starting to decline a little bit, 33 years old up to this point. Um, hasn't really been that oppressive as of late. So they're going to send him down to AAA and bring up Jason Martin so that they can go ahead and take a look and see what he's capable of. Maybe he can mess around. Next up is the Nashville Blues, and they are going to go ahead and take a look at a hot shot prospect in Adrian Aldemera, he's been killing it in AAA, a 1.69 ERA, and he will go ahead and get his big league shot. Whereas Adam Lowe has struggled quite a bit, he will go down to the AAA level. Following the Nashville Blues, we do have the Minnesota Ducks who are going to go ahead and make a move out in center field. Marcio Dubon has been hitting great in AAA, batting 274 and will get his shot with the big league club. But that will also send down Cole Rodier, who, you know, 70 overall, you know, nice player. But that being said, though, um, just not doing that great thus far, you know, go ahead and move him down to AAA. Meanwhile, the Las Vegas Lounge Wizards will go ahead and make a change at the with their starting pitching rotation. They are actually 
going to go ahead and call up Rick Porsorio, doing pretty well in AAA. Go ahead and give the guy his shot, you know, back into the USBL. De Gea Anton, though, has struggled quite a bit, you know, maybe not cut out, you know, to make it, so he moves down to AAA. Another person in the Las Vegas organization that's going to go ahead and get their shot is John Avalias, you know, 306 ERA, 1.1 free whip. Go ahead and give him a shot, but that will push out Fad Ward with a 5.27 ERA. He goes back down to AAA. Meanwhile, Danny Mandic has been stranded at the AAA level for a little bit now. Um, Wander Franco's been good, you know, but, you know, want to see what Danny Mandic has, you know, in the USBL team. So, Wander Franco will actually go back down to AAA for the time being, just so that he can have a little bit more development. Moving on over to another baseball club that is considered out west in the San Antonio Outlaws. Steven Matz has been on fire as of late in the AAA level, so this is a really good time for him to go ahead, move on to the big league club. However, J.A. Happ has really cooled down. He's really declining at a rapid pace, and he's just not USBL caliber anymore, so he's going to go ahead and move down to the AAA level. Another player in the San Antonio organization that is going to go ahead and get his shot is Garrett Clevinger, you know, 3.67 ERA, now surpassing Silvano Bracho in ability. So it's time to go ahead and bring him up to the big league club and call down Silvano Bracho, have him return to AAA for the time being. Elsewhere in the San Antonio organization, Ramel Tapia is also going to get his shot once again. They're going to bring him back up to the USBL level. Connor Scott, you know, seems like a guy that has a promising future in this organization, but, you know, right now, maybe not the best time for him, only batting 207, have him develop a little bit longer down in AAA. The next team on deck is the Charlotte Cougars, and there will be a change for them as well. Luke Rennie has been doing solid in AAA, and I think it's time to go ahead and give him his shot at the big league club. Wayne LeBlanc, on the other hand, has struggled. He's starting to decline as well. 36 years old. I think it's time to go ahead and move him down to AAA for the time being. On the other hand, the Jacksonville Suns are getting ready to call up one of the youngest players in not only in USBL baseball, but in entirety on professional baseball. Francisco Alvarez, only 18 years old. The Jacksonville Suns feel like he is ready to see what he's made of. He's going to get the call up to the big league club. Replacing Webster Rivez, who not as impressive. 51 at bats. A batting average just barely on the interstate. He's going to be sent down to AAA. Checking out the Washington Senators organization here on MLB The Show 21. Daniel Robinson will be indeed getting the call up to the USBL level. Batting right now, 279 in AAA. I think he's ready to go. Going to go ahead and move him up to the, to, the, to the team. And then Eric Sogard. You know, Eric Sogard's starting to climb a little bit. So he's going to go ahead, spend some time down in AAA, see if he can get himself right. Moving over to the Louisville Colonials organization, and we are going to go ahead and see what Ronaldo Hernandez can do. You know, he's been growing quite a bit, only 22 years old. And you know what, Chad Wallach has also, you know, been really cold as of late. So I think this is a good time to see what this kid can do. You know, see if he has what it takes, you know, be the backup for Buster Posey. Another move that the Louisville Colonials are going to go ahead and make is Tank Jake Hager, who has been on fire as of late, bring him up to the big league club as well, and take down Jen Lowry, who, you know, in limited action has done a really good job. At the same time, you know, just uh, maybe not the best of fits overall. Just going to go ahead and bring him to better pastures, take him down to AAA. Keeping it in the National League Central, the Milwaukee Bear Beers, I should say, are going to go ahead and make a move themselves. Alex Dickerson has been doing extremely well at AAA. It's time to move him up. Meanwhile, Cyrus Telshaw has been really cold and, you know, just 
not there yet. You know, send him down to AAA, get his confidence back up, and maybe bring him back up to the Milwaukee USBL club later on. Same situation out there in center field as well. Lorenzo Kane has been killing it. And it's time for him to move up to the big league club. You know, he's, you know, more than ready for the occasion. Monte Harrison is good. Don't get me wrong. You know, has a bright future, a potential, but not ready just quite yet. Have him spend some time in AAA and really refine his skills, you know, while waiting in the wings. And finally, out there in the outfield, Nomar Masera. He's ready to go, man. 310 batting average, 12 home runs, 47 RBIs. Bring him up, man. See what he can do. He's been playing well. Uh, Stevens Piscotti will be replaced. He will be heading back down to the AAA level. As for the Memphis Bobcats, they're not going to make one. Oh, no. They are going to make two changes to their bullpen. They are actually going to go ahead and call up not only Brian Abreu, uh, up to the USBL club, but they are also going to go ahead and call up Jose De Leon as well on top of it. So that means both Nick Margafsius, he's going to move down to AAA, and then the same fate will happen to Nick Rodriguez as well. He will also move down to Nick uh, to AAA in order to get his confidence back going. Meanwhile, the Memphis Bobcats, they're going to bring Hideaki Asunken who has a .53 ERA so far this year. They're going to have him go from double A that he's at right now. He's going to move all the way up to the big league club. Give him his opportunity. He looks like he's killing it. See what he's made of. And you know, Juwan Manawa, he's going to have to go down to triple A. And then Mike Morin as well, going to get some uh, take a little bit of an L as well, going down to double A for the time being. Another player in the Memphis Bobcats organization that's going to get their shot is Dom T. Williams. Currently batting 233 as of right now, you know, but shows, you know, some good abilities. You know, really starting to get it together. Going to go ahead and bring him up to the big league club to back up Kevin Kiermaier, which means Dalton Verso will be moving down to AAA for the time being. We knew that the Phoenix Firebirds had a little bit of an aging pitching staff, and we might see that in the fruition right now. Zach Eflin looks like he's ready to go as of right now. You know, ERA 2.73, you know, 69 strikeouts, 22 walks, a whip hovering around 1.1. He will go ahead and move himself up to the big league club to be their number four starter. And Jeff Samarja you know, is going to get cut. He's going to move down to the AAA level because Cole Hamels is on fire. You can't move him just quite yet, but Zach Eflin will get his opportunity. Another pitcher in the Phoenix Firebirds organization that will also get their shot as well is Alex Young. 82 pitches, you know, as a reliever so far this year. Only a 2.5 ERA to show for it, so he will move up to the big league club. On the other hand, Adam Morgan, you know, with an ERA of seven or more, you know, going to move down the AAA, just not acceptable, you know, to try to go ahead and make a playoff push. But it does not stop there for the Phoenix Firebirds. Bubba Thompson, you know, who has developed really well so far, he will also receive his shot. He will move up to the USBL level to replace Verdell Drysdale. 24 years old, B potential, but only batting 208, he will be moving down to AAA. Meanwhile, for the San Diego Whales, they will also go ahead and make a change in their bullpen as well. As Matt Whistler, you know, is going to come up, you know, so and that and the main reason that Matt Whistler is going to come up, you know, is because and Andreas Munoz just might not be ready yet for the USBL just yet. Have him develop a little bit longer in AAA, and then he should be ready to go after that. But then, there's actually David Phelps is up there as well. So then, San Diego, shortly after, you know, changes their mind, David Phelps goes down. And then, Andreas Munoz, he returns back to the USBL level. So, Andre Munoz almost getting demoted, but then he'll eventually be brought back up. Um... Because, you know, David Phelps just isn't cutting it at, at the USBL level.
And the last team that is going to go ahead and get covered is the San Francisco Seals. At least one change that they're going to make is David Hernandez. He just ain't it down here at the USBL level. So we're going to move him down to AAA. You know, be a mentor for those young minor leaguers. But the question is, do they bring up Jason Adam or Dave Altavilla? Jason Adam looks like, you know, has been doing a little bit better. So they'll go ahead and give Jason Adam his USBL opportunity first over Dan Altavilla. All right, guys. So that was all of the call-ups that did happen throughout the USBL. You know, I, a lot of things happen, but... Guys, we are getting ready to gear up for the first ever USBL All-Star break. And we got a good one here in store for you guys as well. We will end up um, not only having the regular All-Star game, but we will have the Futures All-Star game, the All-Star games for the AAA and AA. And then to top it off, we will have the Home Run Derby. That's what next episode is going to be all about. Those five games right there. And then maybe we'll do a little bit of simming to get into, you know, early August. Um, pick up from there, you know. It's going to be a quick pickup here, you know, next second half of the season, probably just focus on teams that are in the playoff race, and it's going to be an exciting second half of the season. So if you're excited for it as well, I do encourage you to smash that like button, hit subscribe as well if you have to be brand new as well as you enjoyed today's USBL action. With that being said, this is John Jake Baseball signing off, and I'm hoping you're having a good one. Take care, y'all.